Hi everybody, welcome back to the Atari 8-Bit series. Today I'm going to work on the 810 disk drive. While transferring the video from my recording studio over to my editing computer, I happen to have lost the intro, so you won't get to see me disassemble the case off of the system. And unfortunately, too, because that was a dirty mess. I mean, it was disgustingly dirty. It had um, for the mud daubers growing inside, or mud dauber nests inside the 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 case screw holes. Inside, it had big spiders. It had cocoons or chrysalis or whatever you call those brown things in it. It was a disaster, and it smelled like smoke, cigarette smoke. So. Fortunately or unfortunately, you don't get to see that part, but you will get to see the rest of it. So here we go. All right, so I have the case soaking in very hot, soapy water. Now I'm going to disassemble this down to its component parts as best as possible so I can clean it. Looks like this is held on with this screw and nut on that side. Or that one screw and nut there. Maybe I'll just go that one. Okay, that screw and nut right there. Sorry, I left for a second. I heard some noise out there. But it seems to be outside the building. Now these go here, so I'm going to... Okay, now I'm going to take my marker, and I'm also going to take my phone here. I'm going to take pictures of how these are connected. And I'm going to number them. That one's, okay, they, they do have numbers. So this is number two on the motherboard, and the other one's number one. Assuming all of this is a happy mechanism. I'm not seeing any Atari stuff on here. Or maybe that's the Atari board there. But it plugs into, everything plugs in here. It's really interesting how it's all hooked together but that's that let's tighten this screw up before it comes oh it is that is the atari board there let's tighten it up yeah i see that in the power switch, switch and stuff okay and now oh i still have one uh, i have one wire here it goes to there i want everything disconnected so i'm going to cut this wire and then i'll re-splice it back together you couldn't see that I got to cut this wire and splice it back together when I reassemble it there's a lot of extra length to that wire yeah it just goes right over yeah that's a lot of extra wire from the mod so wonder how hard it would be to re if I wanted to remove the happy mod I could but for now I'm gonna leave it as is this I'll clean off but it's not that bad What's really bad is this main board here and the... Always take pictures of what you're doing. You never know if you're going to have to put it back together and figure out how it went. That one. That. Now, the drive is disconnected from there so I can unscrew the two screws on the bottom. It's going to take a lot to disassemble and clean down further down in here. A lot of corrosion. A lot of corrosion on this. Not corrosion, dirt actually. Maybe it's more dirt than corrosion on here. Yeah, it's dirt. I'm going to have fun cleaning this puppy. But we shall clean her. Can we clean it? Yes, we can. Those right there. Can I get them loose? Hopefully. Oh yeah, they're coming loose. Yay! Okay, that looks like it's just mostly gunk holding those together. I thought it was corrosion. Well, don't spark too quick. I only got one off. There we go. 
I thought it was corrosion all around this thing, but it seems like it's just gunk. Hell, it could even been thermal paste for all I know. See all that right there? No, that's just gunk. See all this? I just didn't know what that. It actually it probably is thermal paste. Okay, probably is thermal paste. All right, so let's put these back on here so I know where they go. I don't want to lose them. This I can spray down. It's easy to clean. This I'll hose down, and we'll go from there. I don't see now. I mean, I really can't see too close without taking without getting the cleaner first. But I don't see any signs of corrosion. Surprisingly, I see no signs of corrosion. Hell, the drive select switches still work. Hmm. All right, so let's we'll spray this out with some nice, pretty water and everything else. Get it nice and clean. Well, actually, what I'm gonna do. Instead of hosing these down, because hosing them down, I take a chance on, I don't know, maybe hurting them. I'm going to just clean them gently right here. So I'll put the soapy water in here, agitate it with the toothbrush. Then I'll spray it with the, at the sink with the warm water. All right, I'm gonna go spray them off at the sink now. All right, so I hosed them down. Well, I didn't hose them down. I sprayed them with a gentle stream of water, not high pressure. Now I'm gonna use... All right, so now what I'll do is I'll take these and I'll go set these in front of the fan. So let the fan go on them for an hour or so just to make sure there's no leftover residue floating around in there. And then, like I said, I'm going to spray them down with um, um, electronic cleaner to get them nice and clean as best as possible. Make sure all these are seated. I might pop them out and them again. Make sure they're seated well. And I'll just look for signs of corrosion. I don't see any real signs of any kind of real corrosion at all. It just was really dirty. So I'm going to do that now. Now this board is not that bad. I'm just going to blow this one dry down, get air out with the compressed air, just make sure there's no dust or dust bunnies or nothing. All right, so yeah, that doesn't need much more. I'm going to try to reseed all these ROMs so they look pretty tight in there. And this right here needs a bath. Let's clean it while we have it here. It doesn't look dirty, but cigarette smoke, I want to try to get as much of it off as possible. Got to watch these wires too while I'm doing this. I don't want to break a wire. All right, now I'm going to go spray this off and then we'll put it in front of the fan. All right, so everything else is clean now and it's in front of the fan drying. Last thing is this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the can't or use the air on it and just see if I can get most of it out that way. Now I'm cleaning it, I'm noticing the stickers on it. The one that gets me is this one right here, April 6th, 1983. This came out in like 79 and by the time 83 came along they were selling the 1050 drives and the XLs and almost ready for the XEs. I don't think this is a 1983 drive from Atari. Now it's possible it may have been worked on. Maybe that's when somebody installed the Happy Mod. What's under here? March 31st, 1983. So yeah, they're both... It was checked out that time, but seriously, I mean, were they still making the A10 drives in 83? Possibly. I didn't think they were, but maybe they were. Maybe they were doing them as a cost reduction. This was stuck, so I got it unstuck. You could, if you look here, you can see there's a couple spots where it was stuck. I just slowly turned it and made it pop loose and you have more spots here. But other than that, it's going and it, I don't feel any resistance in there. 
So we got all the major dirt out of here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a dry toothbrush. And maybe dry. Let's see. I'm going to grab some Q-tips here because we're going to be pretty busy with them. And I'm just going to wipe all this stuff off that I can off of here. Then I'm going to re-oil them, re-lube them with the sewing machine oil. with all this stuff on there. Then what I'll do is, see what's happened is over time the oil that was on these rails has just picked up all the dirt and dust and grime and cigarette smoke. If, if I sound redundant about the cigarette smoke, it's because, yeah, I am a slight militant ex-smoker. Not militant in the fact you want to smoke, go ahead and smoke, but uh, after smoking for 26 years and quitting 13 years ago, I realize smoking's not a good thing. I am down to the, the dregs of my rubbing alcohol. I'm going to scrub this head here, really scrub it. Not scrub, really clean it with the rubbing alcohol. And then with the dry end of the Q-tip. A little bit on the felt pad on this, just to make sure there's nothing on it. Alrighty. Everything moves well. Let's take our soapy water now. First, let me do that one more time with the rubbing alcohol. Just in case any dust got blown on there and stuck to it. I did save that disc. I looked at it and it, the disc doesn't seem to be dirty, so I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to see what was last used in this drive. Maybe I can help it finish. Never know what was on it. Alrighty then. I think we can start to reassemble this now. Let me go start gathering some parts. Alright, so now we'll start reassembling this here. I'm going to get to a point where I'm going to have to get some screws out of my case because I'm not putting those messed up, rusted, and ruined screws in it. But I'm going to assemble as much as I can before I have to do that. I seriously wouldn't be surprised if this thing went boom when I turned it on, but we'll see. You know what I noticed that's interesting about this is all the aluminum pieces in here say Alcoa on them, which is the aluminum, aluminum company of America. Aluminium. Surprise, I mean, it's been stamped out of it, but it's interesting in that they weren't like custom made. It's like they went and bought sheets of aluminum and just stamped. It didn't care what it said on it. I mean, does it matter? No, but you kind of expect them to do things like that. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is put this on here. This almost seems like it was made a custom made job the way they, they switch between different screw types and then it has that stamped thing. It's almost like they were like making one offs, but that don't make any sense because these things a lot of these were made. And our cable we have to hook up. Oh, this one, oh, I see. This was just hot glued down there. All right, so maybe we should just hot glue it back down, huh? 
See right there, there was hot glue holding that in place, and it came off with all the movement. So let's get the hot glue gun out and heat it up, and we'll reattach it there. Ooh. All right, that'll warm up. While that's warming up, let's plug in the happy board. Come on. Uh-oh, we got a disconnection. Yep, right there. Wire came off right there, so we got to reattach that. I was worried about that. Things happening like that, but we shall fix it. Oh, that's right. They didn't use the light on the front of this here. They had the lights here. Okay. That's behind the bezel. You don't see it. Alrighty. So this comes up here, and we're going to have to solder that one back on there. And we have to solder these two together back here. Let's hook these wires back up. Alright, are we hot enough here, glue gun? To get this down in here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a dollop of glue down the same place again and just shove this down in there. That's what it looks like they did last time. And just hold it in place. Let the glue dry. I use hot glue a lot on computers because I work with the Coleco Atoms a lot and Coleco loves their hot glue. So I use it also. It just doesn't conduct electricity and it holds things in place. All right, now I'll just take the hot glue and glue them so they don't come off again. Like put a strain relief in it with the hot glue. Now, as I said, the hot glue does not conduct electricity. So it'll hold it right in place. It works just fine. All right, put a few things away and we'll get the case on. All right, so we're ready to reassemble the case. Got it as clean as I could. It's, yeah, it's never going to win a beauty contest. But, it is old too. So let's assemble this now. We should power it up before we put it back together the rest of the way and just see if it goes boom. So let me go get a power supply for this and I'll be right back. All right, so we got a power supply and we're gonna see if she powers on now. See if it doesn't go boom. That's a very good sign. Oh, things moved. You do see that? Look at that, very good sign. Then up on the front we have the busy and the power on light. Then that's that must be the happy on and off. Okay. All right, so we we got life here. Let's finish reassembling it and see what she does.
All right, so it looks like my camera's cut out there when I was assembling it in. But she's assembled now. Now I'm gonna go take and plug her in and I'll take the camera with me and we will see how she works out there connected to the rest of the systems. All right, so here we are at the system. We're gonna hook it up, put in an 810 master disc. Power this on. Happy's off. Let's see what we got. Look at that, a 41 year old disk drive still works. That's awesome. While I got this hooked up here, I should take the other disc, this thing, clean it off. Because I, I looked inside and I don't see any like mold or discoloration on the floppy itself. A little bit of dirt right there on right there. So I'm gonna clean this off real quick. And then we're gonna see how see what's on that disc. Alright, so I cleaned it as best as possible. I used some rubbing alcohol on the exposed media, spun it a couple of times, make sure there's nothing in there. I have no idea what's on it. And probably gonna dirt make the drive dirty, but let's just see. I'm curious, what was the last thing this this disk drive did before it got put wherever it went? Not sounding too good. Yeah, it's no good. All right, so there was nothing on it that we know of. Was it a happy disk? Let's turn it off, switch over to happy mode. Maybe it was a happy boot disk. Let's find out. Nope. All right, so there's nothing in it. So that disk is no good, like we thought. And I probably got my head dirty in there too now. Let's find out. Turn off the happy. Turn it on. Nope, she's still good. Good. So it works. 43, it's 40, it was made in 83. It's 41 years old. Dirty as can be. Sitting in an attic or a basement. I think it was an attic he said it was. And it works just fine. So, got one more left of this pile. I got the 1050, the dirty 1050. That one's a mess inside, too. Clean that one up and get that one working, and then we'll be all done with the hardware. I mean, I got the modem. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I got that 410 program recorder. I do want to pull that apart and just see if I can figure out if the belts are sticking, if they're replaceable, but I'm not too concerned about that. What I do need to get is SIO cables. I only have the one. So there you go, though. We got the 810 working. Have a good day.